If like me, you purchased your car with this lane keep assist feature, expecting that you would be able to let your hands off the wheel for a little bit, uh, and then we're sorely disappointed to find out you can absolutely not, um, because it crosses the lane as it bounces you back and forth. It's a, a technology that didn't, it, it's not being taken advantage of, uh, correctly. Well, this guy right here, this is a dash cam produced by comma.ai. And you uh, acquire this dash cam and you can then install open source software called open pilot, which enables it to actually do the steering. Let's start the car. Yeah. Before we go for a test drive, I thought I would show you um, what it takes to install uh, an open pilot system. In uh, in this case, we're in a Suburban. Um, pretty much going to be the same experience with uh, with the Tahoe and uh, Yukon, I believe. Escalade might be on the list. There's a few other cars that that use the same uh, the same frame. So what you do is you get out a measuring tape. You measure from end to end. You find the midpoint. Uh, you then mount this thing. Ideally, you get a level. I'd recommend getting a level because when I tried to eyeball it, I was wrong. You get a level and you stick this thing on your windshield so that there's enough space you can pop it off the windshield if you need to. All right. Uh, you've mounted the comma three. That's done. Now, this plastic cover here, pop that sucker off. Just like that. See, when I popped this off on my uh, Chevy Bolt, a bunch of tribbles fell out. So, so uh, I guess Suburbans are better in that regard. So up here, there's some wires and stuff. This guy right here, that's your uh, front-facing camera. That's what does the uh, steering for you and the auto emergency braking. We're just going to go ahead and unplug that. You Generally, you don't want to do this while your car is on. There's another thing that's gonna come with it, um, or you'll need to acquire. This is the uh, harness box. You get that from Kama. And this here, this is the, uh, I guess you would call it wiring harness um, that I designed and I assembled. Um, and I'm not the best with the dexterity, so this was a real pain in the butt to put together. The crimping wasn't that bad this time. It was a soldering that was hard, but you can't see it, but there's a little circuit board under there. Um, it's a custom circuit board that I have, uh, that I designed and I had it, uh, 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 what do you call it, printed, built. I, I use JLC PCB. I ordered these boards before COVID, so who knows what the lead time is going to be now. Anyway, so to hook it up, you unplug that thing. And then you just plug this in between. Plug this into the camera. And then plug the uh, car connector into that. I'm going to need two hands to do that. There you go. You have not voided any warranties or anything. Isn't that amazing? So now this, uh, this, uh, this guy here plugs into the harness box. Back of the harness box. Can I do it with one hand? Yes. And finally... This USB-C looking cable plugs into that harness box as well. And what we should see happen now, hey look, it's coming to life. I know what you're thinking. I don't want all these wires hanging around. Well, uh, the harness box comes with adhesive on the bottom so you can find a place to mount it out of the way. Um, sometimes you can, mount, some people mount it on the windshield but you might even be able to uh, you might even be able to stick it on the other side of this camera. I wouldn't recommend it because the camera gets pretty hot. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and find the space and close it up. And there you go. That's it. Just that one little cord running up under that plastic cover. I believe this guy is alive now. Yeah. So now let's go ahead and start the car and see what happens. Uh, this is the first time I've built one of these wiring harnesses in a while, so <laughs> um, I'd say it's good that it's working. 
Now in order for this to work, your car does have to have both adaptive cruise and lane keep assist. Right now we haven't found a way to uh, make it work if the car does not have those features already in some capacity. On this particular frame, ooh, we got Popo up there. I was going to demonstrate it at low speed, but I decided uh, not to do that in front of a Popo. All right. So this particular configuration is new for GM in that we take advantage of the car's built-in adaptive cruise. All I just did now is I turned on the cruise control, but this thing made a happy little chirpy noise and now the screen has this green light on it. What does that mean? It means I don't have to steer. Let's just, uh, Watch it for a bit. Oh, we got a stoplight, of course. Okay, here we go. I'm going to uh, demonstrate that again, how I turn on open pilot. That's how you turn it on. And then you just uh, sit back and watch. Now, this is not fully tuned. So yeah, it needs a little help sometimes. One of the major processes that is very time consuming and difficult and and I haven't yet learned how to do is tuning steering. When I get it figured out, it's gonna be great. Um, and it, it will be figured out. We've got a lot of people with a lot of skill on this. You see, I gotta help it a little bit here. Not much, actually. It's, it's doing a pretty good job on its own. So, it takes advantage of the car's built-in adaptive cruise, so it will stop and go as well as the built-in adaptive cruise does. I don't have the guts to let it attempt to uh, come up on a stopped car, so uh, maybe somebody else does. Okay, so now, it's going to follow that car in front of us using the adaptive cruise built into the car while open pilot keeps us centered in the lane open pilot the traditional gm port has been based on a uh, a, a, a chassis that has a separate component usually that sits in the back of the car called an uh, active safety control module the front camera and the radar send raw data to that thing and that thing sends the steering and the gas and the brake commands. This car is different. Um, the front camera sends its own steering commands. It doesn't send any sort of object data and the radar unit, likewise, I better slow down. This is a uh, whoo, speed trap. You didn't see that. There we go. So in that configuration, uh, OpenPilot can accept those radar data points and OpenPilot will actually perform both the adaptive cruise, that's called longitudinal, and the lateral. I don't know why exactly. Uh, check this out. OpenPilot handles the uh, turn for you. That's one of those cool features they added a while back. Anyway. I don't know why the manufacturers did not just have it center you because I, the, the, the camera built into the car is capable, but anyway, so open pilot fills in that gap. It uses artificial intelligence, uh, like neural networks and stuff to identify the lane markings. I don't know if you can see that. And then it does its very best to keep your car centered in its lane. And then with this adaptive cruise, oh, this is cool. This is cool. We're gonna, this is my first time seeing this thing come to a complete stop. Okay. So the stock adaptive cruise doesn't do stop and go. That's, that's too bad. That will be a reason maybe in the future that a person might want to, uh, uh, let open pilot take over the adaptive cruise so that it can do full stop and go, but no big deal. You just gotta 
hit the gas and hit resume, I do believe. Maybe not. Maybe I go a little faster. There we go. Give it some help. Like I said, it's uh, barely tuned. Not really even tuned at all. I've done no tuning. This is the stock tune, which is terrible, and it's doing a pretty good job. So I still have a fair amount of work to do for Steve uh, before I can give him his car back. His creepy, creepy FBI looking car. And uh, he opted for the comma three. The comma three, oh, that is nice. It, it did handle that abrupt stop very well. Wow. So anyway, uh, this is the comma three. It's the latest uh, device from comma.ai. It is um, so much nicer than their older models. I, I can't, I, I can't even tell you. Well, I can actually give you an example. On the old version called the comma two, uh, compiling the code that's on here oh takes a good half an hour takes less than 10 minutes on this device for me that is a fabulous measure of its capabilities i actually have no idea where i'm going right now <laughs> but i'm i'm not even uh i'm not even the one driving the car is driving ho ho so Steve seems to think this is something that a lot of people might be interested in. Hence why he uh, thought maybe I should make a video about it. So right now we're going about 50. I mean, this is sort of a, not a full on highway, but, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll hop on the freeway in a little bit. All right, let's see, let's see. I'm not, I'm not gonna touch the brake. I'm not touching anything. Oh, wow. Oh, this is nice. My at no times did my hands leave my arms. I, 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 I promise, no feet touching nothing. I'm impressed. I, I guess, yeah, that's that's cool. So where are we going with this? Uh, I don't own a comma three. I can't afford a comma three. So when I'm done with Steve's car. Uh, and I give it back to him, I'm not really going to be able to continue development. Um, uh, uh, and uh, Kama has announced that in about six months they're going to stop providing support, support, not support, but updates for the, uh, for the Kama 2, which means I will be stuck. That is why we have this GoFundMe campaign so that I can continue to work on this port. Now, what is special about this port as compared to what I've been working on for the last two years is that Kama is interested in having these vehicles listed as officially supported on their website. It's very possible that when I am done with this, um, you won't have to use a special copy of open pilot right now this is running a custom version that i've written um it's using a custom harness that i built all of my work is open source and i will be sharing it with comma if everything goes well they will add it uh to their list of supported things and then these cars are going to be uh almost first class and we got another cop let's see if he notices me Okay, he didn't turn his lights on. We're good. <laughs> I'm not sure if Michigan has laws about holding a phone or not. This is working remarkably well. I have not had to touch the wheel in quite a while. And this is fairly curvy. Yeah, I'm impressed. It's a really great feeling when you see something that you've been working on uh, come to life like this um i have been i guess you could say working on we'll call it the large frame port almost full time for the last three months i think i started in Oct before october so it's been a while um gentleman goes by the name very lucky guy pulled me back in uh with his acadia 
his Acadia was having a problem that the steering column would fault all the time and I had a way of fixing it so I fixed it for him and um, we managed finally working with comma to get a fix that has been upstreamed it's not perfect but it gets the incident of errors down to almost none this car right now this car does not have my fix and you notice the steering still works the uh the work that has yet to be done is sort of it's that that last 10 percent that always takes 90 percent of the time the fit finish and polish i have all the electrical connections good to go we have all the basic functionality working it can speed up and slow down uh open pilot plays well with the car that took some effort because this car's um uh, messages are different than the messages in a chevy bolt or you know other smaller frame fancy little vehicles with their electronic parking brakes and whatnot obviously there is more torque required to turn the steering wheel being larger i think this car actually has hybrid steering it's I think it's got both um both electric and hydraulic but uh, Open Pilot is able to control the electronic steering component. How does it do it? Well, that camera, that front facing camera in this particular car has the ability to send messages to the steering wheel to make it turn. Open Pilot uh, blocks the messages coming from the camera and it sends those same messages, except it does a much better job of keeping you in the center much 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 better and it gets better all the time they are constantly adding features this is an actively developed uh, piece of software that is bleeding edge cutting edge well they have cutting edge they have release versions and they have the cutting edge versions it's supposed to be getting some kind of navigation soon i, I don't know how that's going to work but that is a comma three exclusive feature I can't, I was skeptical about this device, uh, and probably partially because I just can't afford one, but uh, it is pretty fantastic. Uh, the, even the, just the user interface, everything about it is very smooth and buttery. Plus it has these 360 degree cameras here, so, uh, oh yeah, <laughs> that's the other thing that I think is pretty awesome and sort of sets Open Pilot apart. Uh, you don't have to keep your hands on the steering wheel. You don't have to touch the steering wheel at all. Unlike Tesla or the offerings by other companies that I believe require you to touch the steering wheel periodically, um, it watches your face. So this thing, this little camera here, is looking at my ugly face and it's it's able to track like where your eyes are and where you're looking. And if it detects that you're looking at your phone or you're looking out the window or you're uh, tying your shoes or something, um, it will start complaining and then it will eventually set off alarms and disengage. That is a huge safety feature. If you start falling asleep, it will set off very loud alarms to uh, wake you up. I wouldn't know anything about that. Now, there are actually several um, different configurations that GM has for their lane keep assist and adaptive cruise. I mentioned earlier that active safety control module, the ASCM, that is the one that was on the bolt and currently that is the only um, supported method by open pilot however uh gm decided around 2019 to put a can bus uh gateway a security a cyber security gateway uh that filters all the important messages from your your obd yeah i can't find it your obd2 port it's it's not there so 
uh, the 2019 Bolt, for example, does not work with Open Pilot right now. Um, that is one of the items on my list to make happen. My goal, my personal goal, is to uh, enable support for as many vehicles as I possibly can because I think this technology is earth shatteringly fantastic. It's life changing, especially on long trips. The, the freedom from, oh, better slow down. The, uh, the freedom from having to maintain perfect focus. You're still supposed to watch the road. I mean, you have to watch the road, but you can have a conversation more safely if you aren't paying attention for some reason you have the car as a backup the car is gonna keep you from running off the road and it's gonna keep you from running into the car in front of you this is beyond a convenience it's a safety thing and it's a, a, a life quality thing I think oh look pizza everybody could benefit from it. So, <clears throat> one of the interesting things about the open pilot community is being open source, uh, people are allowed to make custom forks. You can take their code and you can modify it. And you can make your own special version that does your special things you want. There's a little, little uh, need a little help. So what I am trying to do is make my changes as minimalistic as possible so that they can be upstreamed, so that everyone can take advantage of them. So when this car is fully done, it will be included in open pilot stock and it will then flow naturally into all of the forks. So eventually, all the forks of open pilot are going to gain access to suburbans tahos yukons uh acadias what else am i forgetting escalade i feel like there's another one bunch of cars i know there's an entrance to the highway somewhere around here anyway as i mentioned i've been working on on this almost full time since uh, October or maybe even before um, and I don't get paid I am uh, in the process of, of, of getting disability I, I am disabled and so this isn't work this is just you know keeping my hands busy but I'm not I have no income um, and I don't I don't uh, demand money from people to get this set up. Steve says I should. <laughs> I don't know. My business skills are practically non-existent. I tried. It didn't work. I like to fix things. Um, and I, what I get out of this is the satisfaction of not only solving problems, not only sitting in a giant freaking car. Look at how big this thing is. It's ridiculous. Uh, this thing can tow also. I don't know what towing is going to do with open pilot. That's going to be fascinating to see what happens. But um, the possibilities are pretty exciting, especially the ubiquity of Suburbans and Tahoes and all these things. They're very common vehicles and a lot of people have these lane keep assist features. It's it's so simple. You saw, you stick it to the windshield, you plug it in. Boom. You just have to get that wiring harness for me and you have to, right now, use my code, which is still actively in development. As I mentioned, we we're trying to get the steering better. So, what do I need to continue the development? I need people, first of all, who are willing to be guinea pigs. Every new car, even though this port 
is going to have most of the work required to bring in uh, the Tahoe and the Escalade. I haven't actually tested them. Uh, this Steve bringing me this car is the first time anyone has done that and it has had a huge, huge accelerative uh, impact on this process. This I accomplished uh, several times in one day. I've accomplished um, months worth of work doing this remotely. So what I need is guinea pigs. I need guinea pigs. I need a comma three that I can work with. Once I get this back to Steve, I, I don't have one. I also need, well, I, I do kind of need to eat and, you know, buy pants. These pants are in really bad shape. <laughs> and I, I, I got a kid, got to feed him too. Generally, if you don't feed your kids, you kind of get in trouble. <laughs> I have to write a lot of code. This here, this is my uh, this is my laptop from 2016. This laptop has uh, sucked up a cup of water and been uh, desiccated, and you know I've I actually posted a YouTube video about the process. It doesn't work quite right. It had a touch screen. Touch screen doesn't work anymore. Keyboard sometimes doesn't work, which is kind of a pain when you're, you know, coding. Uh, this is all very new to me. Ah, here we go. All right. Let's finally, let's finally get on the highway. Adaptive cruise is what I, you know, that's, this isn't doing adaptive cruise on this particular platform. So I don't think I realized I didn't finish. It has a front facing camera that um, sends steering commands and the emergency braking commands and it does the auto headlights and stuff. But then it, uh, it also has the, it does use radar just like the, we'll call them more traditional cars, but that radar is a self-contained unit that does not share its radar data. It just sends gas and brake commands. Well, I, I talked to Kama and they, um, in that case where you don't have radar points, you let the car do the adaptive cruise and that is a supported configuration, believe it or not. All right, check, check this out. It's gonna change lanes all by itself and stop changing lanes. Is that not just stinking cool? I think it's stinking cool. Anyhow. Uh, so I do need a comma three. I, I, I kind of need it. It, it. it is more than a want. It is a necessity, especially considering, here we go again. It's doing the lane change all by itself. I got distracted by these cool features. So, I just like to point out how comfortable I am right now. I got my arm resting here. I got this other arm resting over here. Okay, it was holding the camera. And uh, let's say I was gonna be on this highway for, oh, nine hours. Yeah, there's that tune again, like I mentioned. And we are working on that and it unquestionably has enough torque, but Open Pilot isn't accustomed to applying that much torque. So tuning is a very time consuming process, even for people who are good at it. I've never done it. Can, you can imagine it's gonna take some time. 
it would be helpful to have a laptop that I can rely on, that it doesn't need a new battery, that gets more than two hours um, when it's running Linux, which I kind of have to do all the work in Linux. So that's on the list. Um, there is a there are some components that I have to 3D print. I use resin printers and I've got the printers. That's that's fine, but those have expendables. At some point I probably do need to acquire a an extrusion printer just so I can make things that are sun tolerant. Uh stepping out even a little more to the crazy out there. Open Pilot will run on a PC uh, with a couple of webcams. Think about the possibilities if you could get some kind of a, like a small PC that could be tucked somewhere and then you, you, if you could hide the camera itself under here and maybe use this as the screen, that's the dream, man. That's the kind of stuff I would like to make happen. We are behind a Tesla, by the way. I'm sure that he thinks he's pretty cool with his uh, his autopilot. I should mention this is a fraction of the cost of the autopilot feature. And in some cases it works better. I believe Consumer Reports even took the opportunity to test it and found it did a better job than Tesla's... <laughs> Tesla's... Um, uh, neural processor custom built hardware this, uh, this thing had been running on a cell phone I don't believe I have hang on I do have the old one see it's just a cell phone in a 3D printed case with a, with a heat sink stuck on the back this is the Eon this is the not the first gen but second gen. Oh, see? See, I told you. It caught me not looking. What is happening right now, this um, open pilot is able to do on that cell phone in addition to the comma 3, but all the new stuff is coming to the comma 3, and we know there's only six months of updates left for that device, so well, there you go. The process of porting a vehicle is a lot like playing whack-a-mole. Generally, when you first attach this to a car that it's never been in, it's going to say the car is unrecognized. So you get it to recognize the car, and then it starts throwing all these errors. And so you start disabling those errors until you get it to work. But when it works, generally the actuators don't work quite the way you expect. I mentioned before about the whole putting one's life in risk. This is definitely a safety third kind of process. At least for me. Uh, I, I take the risks so that you don't have to. really have, I'm not entirely sure about where I am. <laughs> I must have gone much further north than I, uh, than I thought. So let's say you see this and you want this in your car. If you are willing to be a guinea pig, it could happen tomorrow. You will have to run custom software, there will be bugs, uh, occasionally it will crash, not crash as in into other cars, I mean it'll stop working. Uh, you'll have to deal with a bad steering tune until the tune is figured out, but if you don't want to wait, you don't have to. Everything that's necessary to do this is pretty much available, it's just, it's just still not ready for prime time to get it ready for prime time, 
testing, testing, testing. Lots and lots of testing. Cleaning up code. Getting uh, the code changes that I've made upstreamed to comma is actually a very time consuming process because I it has to be broken down into atomic self-contained little pieces that are easily tested. What we have been discovering is that the existing GM port is sort of been neglected and isn't quite up to date with Kama's new requirements. So I will push a, a small change and then I get a response that I'm doing it the old way and so if I'm gonna touch the code I have to also fix it and get it up to spec. It's a lot of work. It's worth it though. It will be worth it when we see these cars on the list of supported cars. It's gonna make it all worthwhile. So yeah, having a, a slightly more powerful laptop would be helpful as well. Those are the two main things that come to mind, is getting a comma 3 and um, since right now myself and uh, a, a gentleman goes by the name Tiny Bear are building the that wiring harness up there, um, it takes me forever to build those those things. I don't know how how hard it is for him, but the parts required for building that um, are becoming harder and harder to find thanks to the Rona. There is also sort of a big feature, one big feature left, uh, the ability for OpenPilot to make your dash show the notifications it would normally show if Lane Keep Assist was working. Uh, it's called the Single Wire GM LAN, that's the technical term. Um, uh, we need a gateway for that, and I've got to reverse engineer something in order to make that happen. And <laughs> again, reverse engineering is extremely time consuming. When it's done though, we'll have a, a fully featured, we'll have the, the capability for full, um, all the features. This port also should mostly apply, it should work for the version of these cars that has that, uh, that special, the ASCM, the Active Safety Control Module. That is an option. I, I couldn't tell you what the exact package names are, but um, if you have that, you just have to connect a different way. You don't use a camera connector. You use a, a harness that attaches to that thing in the back. That harness doesn't exist yet. I'm gonna be helping to develop it. truck. I don't trust him. There. I have rambled on for almost 40 minutes and I do apologize if that is too long because it is too long. I know I've repeated myself a few times. I think I covered everything I was supposed to cover. I, uh, so we the guy the gentleman with the Acadia once I got that working he's he's made trips from um, long trips let's just say very long trips think top of the country to bottom of the country and back uh, with open pilot engaged you know 90% of the time his hands were off the wheel it changes it's game changing and it's worth it the fact that uh, this port may very well bring in support for such a large, uh, it's the largest batch of large frame vehicles that that OpenPilot will, will have at all. They're very popular vehicles. They're, you know, ubiquitous. The 
lane keep assist feature has been around since 2016, I wanna say. So that's a lot of cars we're gonna add support for. I, that's a lot of revenue for Comet AI, which in the end is good for us because it keeps them in business and it keeps them working on their code. I'm not sure if I said that right. It keeps them in business. It keeps them from going out of business. It, it's good. That, regardless what your opinions are of the, uh, the man in charge of Comet AI, it is unquestionably a good thing. Um, to keep them in business as well. Well, here we are. We made a long trip going nowhere. And uh, let's go ahead and shut the car down. So uh, it is actually still a dash cam. And all the recordings that it's made, um, they all get uploaded to uh, this site called Comma Connect where you can view the path you took. It shows, you know, where you engaged and like where you had to touch the steering wheel and stuff. And it's actually also a debugging tool that, that I use extensively. Traditionally, the way the, the porting process works, I usually do it remotely uh, for uh, when I'm doing it for other people. All of my understanding of this is actually based on my work on the Chevy Bolt over there. Oh goodness, the Silverado, how could I forget? <laughs> uh, the Silverado is a port that was done remotely, even. Um, and that was a, a group effort. But So typically the porting process is you get your device, you plug it in. Um, I, I, if, if I help you. And there are other people who can help with this. But if I help you, usually you'll give me access so I can remotely connect to it. And I will get it fingerprinted so that it will be recognized and it will recognize your vehicle. And then you try to drive and you'll get an error. So I have you go back home. I request that you upload your logs. I go in here, this is this is the route that we just took. And you can see, amazingly, the, uh, the video is already there. Look at that. That's the low quality video. Uh, it also does have high def. We all want our high def. Because we live in a, in a high def world. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Once all these logs are uploaded, um, I'm able to actually, I can replay the drive and I can tweak parameters. Uh, I haven't actually figured out how to use the tool that does it, but it's possible. Um, I can look at the raw uh, CAN messages that are sent around. Um, all kinds of fun stuff. And looking at those CAN messages and looking at uh, when an error happens, trying to see what caused the error and diagnosing it. And that that's what I do. It's a, it's a, a very, um, it requires a broad set of skills of which I will not claim to have, but you know, I know how to use duct tape and, and, and paper clips. And then I know how to translate from a duct tape and a paper clip solution to something that you 3D print. Uh, I've learned actually as, as a result of this in the last, you know, since 2019. So, long story short, uh, I understand that people are kind of excited about this prospect. I just need a little help to uh, to keep the project running and to keep it running at a at a good pace. So, all of your help is is greatly appreciated. If you are able to contribute to the um, GoFundMe campaign, that's that's great. Um, you can also just 
uh, PayPal me. Uh, my ID is JJSHULER42. That's my PayPal ID. Or, um, if you just want to support the project ongoing, uh, you can become a Patreon supporter. Uh, Patreon.com slash Standback Labs. And my YouTube channel, where I cover my progress when I get opportunities to record things, uh, is also, it's the Standback Labs is the name of the channel. Well, I've got nothing else to uh, talk about. I feel like I've probably talked about the same things about four times throughout the course of this. I apologize uh, for that. <laughs> but I hope you find this informative. Um, I hope you're as excited as I am about, about the possibilities. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, have a great day.